Three things I want to talk about now with this emergency upload at the end of the day for trading today. I'm going to be very quick here. We're going to talk about micro strategy, how bad that was, a little bit about Bitcoin and how that's been reacting to today's new ETFs that opened up in Hong Kong, as well as the economic calendar and what's going on there. This one's going to be really fast. So if you're a micro strategy, you're feeling a lot of pain today. It's down 17.63%, and that is coming off of a double whammy. Two things happened that were really bad today. Their earnings report came in atrocious, absolutely bad. They missed their earnings per share by over 466%, almost 467%. They were expected to have an earnings per share of 54 and a half cents, they, a negative 54 and a half cents, and ended up with a negative $3.09. Their revenue also came in negative 5.57%. That was bad. If that wasn't bad enough, Bitcoin was down today, uh, is down uh, over 6%. And as a result, we are seeing MicroStrategy hit with two massive negatives today and seeing it come down 17.63% today. And after hours, it's up about a dollar. Right now, you can see that over here on the right on post, it's up. Well, it's up a couple of dollars. I, I can't read. Sorry. It's up four bucks, actually and after hours. So we came down almost to $1,000 today. Now, remember, uh, now, I don't know if anyone bought the dip. Of course, this is not financial advice and not a suggestion to buy, sell, or hold any asset whatsoever. I don't know if you're a buy the dip mentality sort of trader or not, but something to take into consideration is that tomorrow is also a massive news day. FOMC meeting is tomorrow. There are some other data points that are coming out tomorrow as well that could move this market further down. And we know that the Fed has an incentive to move the market down right now. So I would not expect the Fed to do us any favors tomorrow. My expectation is for a lukewarm to potentially hawkish Fed tomorrow, followed by if the market does not respond the way they want, followed by further usage of the mic as a club to beat the market down in the following weeks. Okay, how far could MicroStrategy come down from here? If the Fed decides to take us out tomorrow, you can see that there really isn't a lot of support where we currently are, almost none. Our next level of actual support is all the way down at $808 on MicroStrategy if things just get absolutely obliterated. That's the next level of support. We are currently resting on the daily Bollinger Band, which is good in terms of potentially seeing us go sideways for a little bit and maybe even pop up a tiny bit back up to the five day, which is up at $1,200. Now, given the fact that there's a double whammy that just came in on MicroStrategy, I don't know if we'll find our way back up to the five day short term. This is not a gloom and doom video, by the way. I do think that micro strategy will come back. I just don't know when. Short term, the next like couple of weeks, you may see further downside. That's all I'm saying. This is not a fire and brimstone sort of video. I do believe micro strategy will be fine. It will be heading its way back up eventually when Bitcoin does a turnaround. We are simply hitting a bump in the road on that journey, I believe. Of course, this is not financial advice and not a suggestion to buy, sell, or hold any asset whatsoever. Currently, we are sitting on a support level. The next one is $808. Above us, we have resistance at $1,240. That's what's going on with MicroStrategy right now. We could see one more day of pain, I think, and I'm going to look at the Bitcoin chart for that. So today, we moved down over 6% on Bitcoin. It is the first day of the Hong Kong ETF. Remember how I'm constantly saying that crypto loves a sell the news event? Well, that's what's going on here. We're getting a sell the news event. This happened with the US ETFs as well. One thing that is nice about this right now is that we are currently below the Bollinger Band on the daily chart, meaning that this will likely kind of get scooped back up pretty soon, at least back up above $60,000. Currently, we are below $60,000. That is not a good place to be. That is not a place that we want to be, but we are currently there. If we go down further, we are likely to see a wick down to about $56,000, $57,000. 55, remember, $55,000 is a big level where there are lots and lots of orders. If we get below that $52,000, here we come. So $52,000 is a real opportunity uh, in terms of that could happen. Will it happen? I don't know. I do think 55 will probably hold strong for a while. There is a lot of Bitcoin to buy up there before we go any lower than 55000 
Uh, currently, we just went down to 59,000. We wicked down to 59,000, and that was it. And then we started bouncing back up a little bit. And we'll see if that continues. Let's go back to January 9th. January 9th, or, or 11th, sorry, not 9th. January 11th. I don't know where I got 9th. January 11th, 2024 is when the US ETF dropped. That was this day right here. On that day, we actually did a range of, we opened up here and we came all the way down. Our, our max loss on that day was 7% and then it settled at being only down, you know, half a percent. So it was a big move. It was a big wide day. And then the very next day we were down 7%. And then the next day after that we were flat. And then one more day after that we were down another 3% before we got a little bump and then a further down move. Like we were moving down from January 11th until January 23rd. So we had two weeks of pain after that ETF dropped. Now let's take a look. What was the move from the close of the first day? 17%. So we did a full 17% move down. We already got six of that percent. So let's go ahead. What would 17% be if we did a 17% move down? Oh, looky there. 52,972 right to the top of my box if we did a 17% move from where the candle opened today. Um, that is a possibility. I don't think that will happen because Hong Kong is a significantly smaller market than the United States. We might get like half that move. So we might be looking at like, you know, eight and a half percent, which we would be going, that would take us down to about 58,500 ish. Yeah, about 58,500 is where we would be moving if, if we did about a half as much of a move as we did with the US ETFs. So most of this move might already be in. And then we'll see a bit of a, a slumping and then, then a curling. And eventually, once we start seeing that curling move, that's when we'll start getting our breakout from that. Uh, kind of like what we saw back here in March, but opposite, right? Because it'll happen on the bottom instead of on the top. Where do we got a good curling move happening here? I don't see one in recent memory. Uh, so that's all. I think that we could come to maybe the bottom of this descending trend line here. Somewhere around like 58,200, 58,500, somewhere in there. And then we'll start turning around on Bitcoin, I think. And that kind of plays in line with exactly what happened with the US ETFs. So no need to panic yet. The other thing I wanted to bring up real quick is just look at Block. Block is also a Bitcoin play in terms of it has a huge treasury of Bitcoin. It gets a lot of benefit from holding Bitcoin, just like MicroStrategy. And you can see it was also down today, but not down as bad. Um, the, the, there must uh, well, there must be um, a wait for that May 2nd earnings report to come out to see how badly this thing's going to move up and down. But you can see it's been kind of moving in line with Bitcoin since the halving here on April 19th. Uh, it's been, yeah, it's kind of went up and then came down a bit. So that's kind of just an interesting dynamic to pay attention to. I do think this has further downside. I do think we could potentially come back to that $69, $68 level on this one before moving up again. We need, we're currently clinging to this descending trend line right here. The last thing I wanted to talk about today is the economic calendar. Today was all bad. Employment costs went up. Home prices went up. The business barometer went down. And the consumer confidence went down. Every single one of these numbers was bad. And that's one of the reasons we had a bad day today uh, in the market overall, not just in crypto, not just in Bitcoin uh, ETFs or MicroStrategy and other companies. Overall, like the SPY was down pretty big today as well. And that is a result of every single one of these coming in bad. Tomorrow could also be a bad day if Jerome Powell decides that it will be. And that's going to be really important. We'll get employment numbers and construction spending. Those, those will be two big factors. Job openings is also going to be a big factor into seeing how many jobs uh, we're looking forward to in terms of employment going forward. Uh, manufacturing, not as important, but the big one is going to be that uh, FOMC press conference. Uh, that's going to be super, super important tomorrow. They're going to decide where this market moves. We're going to find out if we're going to be allowed to have a leg higher or if that 6% per, uh, that six correction in the SPY becomes a 10% one or not. That's what's going to happen tomorrow. So, so you know, keep your seatbelts on. This is a bump in the road. Uh, and I, I understand that it's scary. It's meant to shake us out. Of course, this is not financial advice, not a suggestion to buy, sell, or hold any asset whatsoever. I will tell you that today I was buying. I was buying miners, I was trading ARM, I was trading Tesla, I was doing lots of stuff today. Today was all over the place. Uh, um, it was hard to do on some of those, like buying the miners, that was difficult today um, to look at how, just how down they were and I was buying into that. Uh, that. It was a hard day. Some days you just gotta 
If you now, of course, if you don't have the dry powder or if you're already leveraged to as far as you're willing to go, that is, of course, you know, everyone is the CEO of their own portfolio. You have to make your own decisions that are right for you. Uh, in my case, it was the right decision for decision for me to be buying today. And like I said before, this is not financial advice. This is not a suggestion to buy, sell, or hold any assets whatsoever. This is for informational and entertainment purposes only. With that said, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a profitable day.